Welcome back, everyone. So if there's one thing this pandemic has taught us, it's whether we like it or not, change is inevitable. It's coming for us. And while it can be tempting to resist change, our next guest is urging us to embrace the reinvention that comes along with it. And she's no stranger to reinvention, having worn multiple hats as an artist, a musician, author, and teacher. And she lays it all out in her new book, People Change. We're thrilled to welcome our friend Vivek Shreya back to the show. Great to see you, Vivek, as always. Uh, hi, friends. Nice oh, to see both it. of you as well. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Now listen, we hear the words change and reinvention a lot in January as part of that sort of new year, new me mentality. Why was it important for you to release a book about reinvention right now? Well, first of all, I really wish that the phrase was new year, new me's, because personally, I don't really mm. ascribe to this idea of like being yourself or, you know, being one true self, or even this buzzword that I hear all the time that I never know what it means, like being your authentic self. You know, for me, I really feel like we're many selves in one lifetime. So, you know, think about <laughs> who you were before the pandemic versus now. Think about who you were in high school versus now. It, it, can you really say which one was more true or was it your circumstances? and your perspectives different at the time. And so I wrote this book because really I'm trying to get people to embrace multiplicity and change and the change that comes with that as opposed to, you know, being stuck wanting to be some sort of static, authentic self. Hmm. You know, change is received differently depending on who you are and what you're changing. In some cases, a person is like celebrated for self-actualizing. And then in another case, a person might be criticized for changing too much and being inconsistent. So what do you make of that difference? I really think that the way that change is received or not received comes down to gender. You know, in my book, I talk about my father and how growing up, because being an immigrant dad meant he had to work like three jobs. We had a very distant relationship, you know, like we weren't very close, but now post-retirement, I find that he's a lot more present. You know, when I call home, he's not just like, here's your mom. You know, we stay on the phone. I try to make small chat with him, small chat. I can't even talk anymore. Small talk with him about <laughs> the Oilers. And he tries to ask me questions about, you know, how many books have I sold at this point and stuff. And, you know, I hold his story very close to me because I think it really highlights the way that you can change at any age, um, as opposed to this idea that, you know, change people who are older can't change. At the same time, I'm also a little bit critical of my attachment to you know, his story and his journey because I think that culturally we love the idea of this stoic man who softens, you know, like even in TV and in movies, you know, the homophobic father who suddenly becomes accepting. It's like the tears start running and we love that story. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. you know, where, where are the tears for the accepting mom who's been accepting the whole time? And so I think it's really important for us when we celebrate change to think about whose changes we celebrate and whose changes do we dismiss or categorize as too much. Oh, I love that. Now, now, Vivek, I want to talk about labels for a second here, because labels can help people feel connected to a community, and they can be a big part of a person's reinvention. But you talk about your own struggle when it comes to the relationship between transitioning and reinvention. How do you see that relationship? For sure. You know, as someone who is obsessed with reinvention, you know, I think that there was a part of me um, sometimes I worry that I conflated reinvention and transition. Um, you know, I think that uh, now, uh, like the thing that appealed to me so much about a transgender identity was this idea of transcendence, you know, transcending my gender. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a lot of ways, I feel like what's happened now is that I am stuck. I've just moved from one box to another box. And now I have to portray this sort of like hyper feminized trans woman. And if I can be totally honest with you, you know, I think the joy of life is to experience as many boxes as possible. And so I think labels can be empowering, but sometimes they can be limiting. And I, I do see labels sometimes as you know, uh, diminishing the possibility of reinvention. Hmm. Change is happening so quickly right now, though, like at a societal level. And some people are more adaptable than others. And I think we all know people, maybe ourselves, who are having problems with that speed of change, especially these large cultural shifts. So how much patience and understanding do you think there should be for those who are 
slower to change or like are they over and we should just cancel them and forget about them? <laughs> Lainey, let's just cancel everyone. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, I mean, I think it really depends on the person. You know, again, I think about my parents and just how far they've come in terms of their journey with accepting my divorce, uh, my evolving sexuality and gender, my ever-changing art career. And I think if I had dismissed them based on their initial reaction or response to any of those changes, I could have fractured our relationship, lost them in my lives. But also, I would have missed the opportunity of seeing them evolve as parents, watching mm -hmm. my parents' growth as people who, you know, have become so accepting um, is so wonderful and healing for me. And so ultimately, I think it's really about giving people the benefit of the doubt. If you want to be given the benefit of the doubt with the changes that you're making, then I think it's important that you give those people around you uh, where it makes sense the benefit of the doubt as well. Change isn't always superficial, but sometimes it maybe feels like it can be. Maybe it's a change in style or a different haircut, or it can be something more permanent like plastic surgery. How do you see the physical aspect of reinvention compared to the more internal one? I mean, it's funny that you asked that because this book actually started out as a different book. It was called Armor. And I was exploring the ways that women, feminine people, and gender non-conforming people use um, fashion and our attire as a form of protection and self-preservation in the world. But as I started writing the book, I realized that so many of these outwardly gestures actually are less about the outside and more about the inside. You know, just for example, right now, I really, really want to cut my hair off. And I even found this like terrible 80s photo, which I sent to a friend of like a really bad haircut. And I'm like, what do you think? Should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? And she's like, first of all, this is a really bad haircut. <laughs> and second of all, I don't think this is about your hair. Like, I don't think it's about you changing your hair or wanting to change your hair. I think it's about something else. And I think she's right. I think it's very much about my mental health right now. And so, you know, I think it's really important to think about the ways that external change, even though we can trivialize it by being like, oh, it's just a haircut or whatever. So often it is reflecting what's going on for the individual on the inside. Hmm. Now, many people might be craving some sort of change or transformation right now, but there are a lot of reasons why the idea of reinvention can feel scary or even impossible. How can people overcome their own fear of change? I mean, I think that when people think of change, they often think of like a big changes like housing changes or geographic changes or relationship changes. And that can feel very overwhelming. And I think for me, sometimes when I have that itch for a change, it's really about making a small change. And so in the book, I actually cut out this whole section where I talk about how I actually um, sometimes just move my furniture around where I'm like, okay, the couch mm. needs to, and it drives my boyfriend bananas because I always do this at like 11 o'clock at night. But anyways, and sometimes, you know, just that small change, not only does it make the apartment feel different, but it also makes me feel different in the context of the apartment and more broadly. And sometimes that change is enough. And sometimes making a small change inspires me to make bigger changes. So for people who are really struggling with making changes, I say start small, move your bookshelf, or get bangs. <laughs> <laughs> well, what won't change, Vivek, is how delighted we are when you're on the show. Thank you so much. It's been Thank such a great so conversation. Much. I adore both of you the so much. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, the book is called People Change, and you can find it everywhere now. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.